understanding how the brain develops, how that brain development is associated with cognitive development, and then what the various environmental, nutritional, and genetic influences are that try to shape those brain growth, cognitive outcome uh, relationships. So, for example, how does breastfeeding play into brain development and cognitive outcomes? How does uh, prematurity alter that relationship, these sorts of, of relationships and, and, and questions so that we kind of spend our time trying to answer. When would yeah. be appropriate for a mom to kind of in, learn about and internalize and use some of this information, you know, with preconception, during pregnancy, with a newborn? Where would you like to talk to? Uh, Which mom would you want to talk to? <laughs> uh, all of them, actually. So I think, you know, most of our studies are, are focused on beginning uh, around 20 to 22 weeks gestation and then following those kiddos throughout the remainder of their pregnancy and then begin early life. Um, but we also have a number of studies that focus on early development, so you know, the first two to three years uh, of life. Um, but a lot of things are, we're starting to find are, are related back to what was happening earlier in pregnancy, and even you know, in terms of mother's health before they got pregnant. So, um, for example, maternal obesity seems to have a, an influence on, on both the, the fetal development and then follow-up child development. Um, the use of this isn't our work, but certainly there's been a lot of work on the use of you know, prenatal vitamins, folic acid, these sorts of things on child neurodevelopment, fetal neurodevelopment, and follow on child neurodevelopment. Um, and then, of course, once you get through pregnancy, then, then the world is uh, the limit, right? And then we have all sorts of questions that every mom sees, right? You know, how, how long should your child be sleeping? Um, you know, infant formula versus breastfeeding versus a combination of the two. Uh, how much activity should be doing? You know, are you playing with your child, reading to them? A lot of work, uh, again, not ours, but uh, we're trying to start to see some of this, looking at just mother-child, father-child interaction and the amount of language that's used in the home. It has nothing to do with just hearing it. There is an actual mother or, or uh, sibling or father interaction aspect. So they, they've done this really cool study where... Um, just listening to a, a tape recording or even a video of someone talking another language does nothing. It has to be someone they know interacting and playing with the child that, that kind of confers that benefit. So um, this whole idea of, of child interaction is, is massive and we've only started to sort of scratch the surface of it. You know, we know that you know, sleep, nutrition, interaction, activity, stress, Etc. You know these all play a role, but what's the big one? Right. If you can only choose one, you only put your you only put your bed on one of those. What would it be? 